Well, we're here um, to remember. The program tonight is entitled, As We Remember. It's a beautiful picture of the senior John Sheridan and Sister Mary Campbell. And um, I think, you know, it's almost two years since the accident. It will be in August. Um, we're remembering with sorrow. Um, but I think we're also remembering with joy. In part, we're celebrating. Um, Doug Kamek has been through a, a tremendous uh, journey of pain and suffering. And he's turned that suffering into the volume which many of you have in your hands. Um, lift up your hearts. That was Monsignor's exhortation. And he never said it at Mass like he was going through the motions. Lift up your hearts! Right? And uh, there's nothing like it. You didn't miss it. And the children heard it, and all of us heard it. And uh, it's so good that we're here gathered. We've got guests, not only from the parish, but outside the parish. Um, and this is, uh, this is terrific. Um, so it's joy and sorrow. And we're going to hear the themes of Doug's book, Lift Up Your Hearts, uh, read aloud by various people, including our own Martin Sheen, Father Bill, Sister Mary, uh, and uh, I'm very grateful to Doug for giving me the easiest section of all. Mine is entitled, Coming to Terms with Evil in the World and How to Be Explained. Kind of. Radical, radical kindness. What I thought I'd do, you know, I'm Paul Cantino, by the way, if you don't know me, I'm, I'm here in the parish. Our family's been here for 10 years. So I'm really honored to serve in this, this capacity. Um, I love Doug. I love him on scene very much. I told him that often. I uh, had Sister Mary, we knew we all did. We uh, love this parish. And uh, Doug made a very good suggestion when I walked in, just to remember what happened a couple of years ago. And he recounts this. If you have your book and you want to follow along, it's on page 105. <coughs> It's the chapter entitled Hearts Stopped, Broken, Shattered, where Doug uh, remembers what it was like in that almost instantaneous moment where they're joyfully leaving the celebration of Louisville, and at the next they're facing um, death. The question of suffering in the world has perplexed the wisest of philosophers. The question of why God would ever permit evil in his created world is a quandary John and I, and I'm speaking from Doug's voice here, John and I will speak of it from time to time in a very academic, almost pedantic fashion. Frankly, when we later confront death in its face, it seemed to me we were both too glib. Taking account of the short distance involved, including the closeness of the ravine and my traveling speed of 45 miles per hour, the time elapsed from leaving the highway to impact is estimated to be a little more than four seconds. That means it took me longer to type this sentence. The short slide at 1.37 p.m. on August 25th, 2010 took Mary's life instantly and resulted in John and I being taken by helicopter to the trauma unit at the University of California, Los Angeles. After multiple surgeries, I survived. John did not. John and I both lodged by a collapsed dashboard and an inflated airbag. <clears throat> Mercifully, John was unable to pivot and looked straight ahead, likely enduring pain far greater than mine, which was excruciating. My penalty for relative youth, my 59, John's 94, was just enough flexibility to turn slightly and grasp immediately 
that Mary was gone. Her eyes, which on earth were always as joy-filled as a child on Christmas morning, were now as empty and sad as those one sees oddly cultivated on fashion models in glossy magazines. My heart was shattered. Worse, I knew John's would be broken. John, I said, Mary needs us to pray. As the heroic sheriff and firemen from the Lost Hills and Cuyuma Canyon stations came rushing to our aid, John and I held the handmade white string rosaries given to the three of us just minutes earlier at the luncheon in the refectory of the Sisters of St. Louis. As I write this, I remember Mary picked a different color, pink, as I recall, a color of joy and happiness used especially on the third Sunday in Advent to express our anticipation of Christ's birth. It was not apparent how conscious John was at that point. I recited the prayers aloud and I could hear John speaking in a low, almost whispered voice. Distraught as I was, I took comfort that John and I were together. Side by side, we felt the intense suffering of serious injury and a short time later, felt the airborne vibrations of the evacuating helicopter. Perhaps we even watched each other undergo emergency surgery, but this, though this caused heat medication in reality. One of the superb UCLA doctors would later recount how the surgical teams went back and forth between John and myself in our treatment. The larger point is that, in the immediate aftermath of the accident, John and I were together sharing everything about the experience from the awkwardness of bed pains to delightful visitors, friends and family from near and far who came to wish us well.